So here we're going to talk about how you factor trinomials. So just like every other time I factor, the first thing I'm going to look for on every single problem is a GCF. And then secondly, I'll consider what size the polynomial is, how many terms it has to decide what to do next. But all these problems will be trinomials. So I want to distinguish with trinomials between simple trinomials and complex trinomials. And the difference is going to be if um, a equals 1 or not. So you can see on all the simple ones, your a, the leading coefficient, is 1 on all these. Whereas in a complex trinomial, it'll be some other numbers. So let's go through this. Number 1, look for a GCF. There is none. So what size is it? It's a trinomial. Is it a simple trinomial? Yes, because the leading coefficient is 1. So what I'm going to do is try to find two factors of c that adds to b. So what two numbers multiply to positive 5? and also add to 6. Now, because they multiply to be positive, I know they have to be the same sign, because only a positive times a positive would give you a positive, or a negative times a negative. But because the two factors also add to be positive, they must both be positive. So then what two factors of positive 5 add to positive 6? Well, 1 and 5. Now, simple trinomials are called simple because once you find those, you just get x and 1, and you get x and 5 just like that. Number two, we'll look for a GCF. There is none. What size is it? It's a trinomial. It's a simple trinomial. So I want to figure out what two factors multiply to positive 24 and add to negative 11. Well, they multiply to be positive, so they got to be the same sign. But then when I check B out, I see that it's negative, so I know both must be negative. Now, if you can't figure out the factors immediately off the, the top of your head, start to make a list. I know that negative 1 and negative 24 are factors of, of 24. Does that add to negative 11? No. So let's try negative 2. Negative 2 and 12. Negative 12, does that add to negative 11? No. How about negative 3 and negative 8? Does that add to negative 11? Yes. So those are my two factors. So this one will factor into x minus 3 times x minus 8. Down here, we look for a GCF. There is none. What size is it? It's a trinomial. And again, it's a simple trinomial. So I just need to figure out what multiplies to negative 34 and adds to negative 15. Now, here the two factors multiply to be negative, so they must be opposite signs, because only a positive times a negative would yield a negative. And when I see b is negative, that tells me that the bigger of the two factors is negative, and it also tells me the two factors are 15 units apart if I ignore their sign. So just start making a list of the factors. If, if you're not familiar with the factors of, of negative 34, make a list. So I know the bigger one should be negative, so let's start at the top. 1 and negative 34, does that add to negative 15? No. How about 2? Does 2 go into it? Yeah. 2 and negative 17. Does that add to negative 15? Yes. So those are the two factors I was looking for. So it's x plus 2 times x minus 17. Let's try this one over here. First thing I look for is a GCF, and this time there is a GCF. You can see they all have an x in common, so I'll factor that out. And I'm left with x squared plus 8x minus 33. So I'll just look at what's left inside. What size is it? It's three terms. It's a trinomial. Again, it's a simple trinomial. So I just want to focus on this. So what multiplies to negative 33 that adds to positive 8? Well, because they multiply to be negative, I know they'll be opposite signs. And since they add to be positive, the bigger one must be positive. And I know they're eight units apart if I ignore their signs. So start making a list. How about negative 1 and positive 33? Is that it? Nope. Does 2 go into 33? No, it doesn't. How about 3? Yeah, negative 3 and positive 11. That's the ticket. So this inside will factor into x minus 3 times x plus 11. And then don't forget to put the GCF on the outside. So let's do a couple complex trinomials now. So the first thing, again, I'll look for is a GCF. There is no GCF on this first one. And I'll notice it's a trinomial because it's got three terms. And I'll notice that A isn't 1. So this is a complex trinomial. So we're going to use the master product method. So I'm going to do A times C, which is 14. So now I'm trying to figure out what multiplies to 14 and adds to 15. What two factors? So if they multiply to be positive, they have to be the same sign. But since they add to be positive, they're both positive. So let's start at the top. 1 and 14. Yeah, so I got it right away. 
Now, in a simple trinomial, we would have been done. We just flipped those into the parentheses. But what we're going to do in a complex trinomial is we're going to turn it into a four-term polynomial so we can do a grouping problem. So I keep the first term exactly the same, the last term exactly the same. Instead of writing plus 15x, I'm going to write plus 1x plus 14x. Now you should notice that's exactly the same as 15x, so I'm allowed to do that, but now I have four terms, so now I can just factor by grouping. So make your two groups, pull out the GCF, I'm going to pull out an x here, divide by x. Don't forget x divided by x is 1. I'm going to pull a 7 out of the second parenthesis, a positive 7, because that's a plus, divide by 7. I get 2x plus 1. And good, those two parentheses match up, so I factor out the 2x plus 1. And the other parentheses is going to be x plus 7. On the second one over here, look for a GCF. There is none. It's a trinomial, three terms. And since a is at 1, it's a complex trinomial. So we're going to do the master product. So I'll do a times c, which is negative 15. So now I'm trying to figure out what multiplies to negative 15 and adds to positive 2. Multiply to be negative, they've got to be opposite signs. Add to be positive, the bigger one's got to be positive. And I know that they have to be two units apart if I ignore the sign. So let's try negative 1 and positive 15. Well, that's not it. Negative 2, well, that doesn't go into 15. How about negative 3 and 5? There you go. That adds the 2x. So again, keep the first term exactly the same. Keep the last term exactly the same. And split the middle term with these two. Now, when I have one positive and one negative, I always put the negative one first because then I don't have to factor the negative out of the second parenthesis when I do grouping. Now, it's not wrong if you do that. It's just easier if you don't. So make two groups, pull the GCF out. I'm going to pull an x, a 3x out, and I'm left with x minus 1. Pull out a 5, and I'm left with x minus 1. So those two parentheses match up. Pull out the x minus 1, and what's left over, 3x plus 5. Now, sometimes a, tri a trinomial will actually be a perfect square trinomial, which means it'll factor into just a binomial squared. Now, to notice it's a perfect square trinomial, just check out the first term and the last term. Uh, the first term's a perfect square, x squared, 49's a perfect square. So, what you want to think about is uh, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 49 is 7, so that'd be 7x times 2. Is that 14x? Yes. So, I know this is going to factor into x plus 7 squared. Now, if you don't quite get that, you can always just factor it as a simple trinomial. What are two factors of positive 49 that add to 14? 7 and 7. So you'd get x plus 7 times x plus 7, which you would write like this. Number 8, you can see this is a perfect square right here. 16 is a perfect square. So that would be 3x and 4. 3x times 4 is 12, times 2 is 24. Now this is okay that it's minus. All that's going to mean is that we're going to put a minus inside when we put this together. So otherwise you could do this by doing the master product. And that's a look at how you factor trinomials.